Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fab Forge 5. I'm really glad you're here. We design and build fun and unusual things, and we always learn something new along the way. We are putting together our spaceship in a bottle. This is the fifth episode of that. It's all gonna come together this time, and we'll also seal it up inside the bottle, give it a test, and see how it all looks. Then I'll show you a few other, um, few other variations of the spaceship in a bottle that I've made or am working on or hope to make. So we'll have a good time. Let's get started. Forge 5. I laser cut a little template to help me align the Neo pixels for the thrusters and then I soldered the wires onto them and I then mounted them onto our thruster plate in the back. Each Neo pixel has three wires plus five volts ground and the data line and then our nozzles will fit over them. I realized something though, once I looked at these nozzles and compared them to the back of the bottle, or the bottom of the bottle, they won't fit because the bottle has a pretty thick bevel in the center. Design failed. So I redesigned them. We'll 3D print new nozzles with a bevel in them to match that, along with the nozzles for the back of the Circuit Playground Express. So with that 3D print done, now they look like this and they fit much better. Otherwise, I have to do a massive amount of redesign to make everything fit right, and I don't feel like doing that right now. Now here are our flexible thruster gaskets, I guess you'll call them. These help center the spaceship inside the bottle. So I'll show you how these all fit together. Gasket fits over the needle pixel, Right over the wires as well. Nozzle fits on top. It's got a small hole in it for a screw. And then a number two machine screw goes through the entire assembly to bind everything together. We'll do that three times for each of the thruster nozzles. And yeah, the screws are a little bit hard to handle sometimes. Make sure we keep track of the wires. And mount everything together. All right, there we go. Now let's test these. We should have the NeoPixels light up in the same color, same random color as the nozzle lights for the back of the Circuit Playground Express. And we've also got our fourth NeoPixel here. Kind of adds a little bit of mood lighting, I guess, to the deck. Notice that's a different color than our three thruster lights, but it's on the same chain of NeoPixels. You can individually address NeoPixels that way, so they can all be a different color if we wish. So I'll keep that one kind of that yellow-orange color. You can see our Raspberry Pi booting up. That still works. That's a good sign. And our nozzles just change to another random color, still flickering like we like. 
And here's another color. This cycles through nine different colors, which is kind of fun. Time to add our seat, our astronaut chair. It fits right into a laser cut slot in our deck. And I'll use some E6000 to glue it in. Just like that. And our astronaut sits just like that. Get a sense of how that looks. We'll glue in our astronaut, let that set. Now we need to add our vacuum tubes. These are kind of like, I don't know, fuel tanks, I guess. They'll get lit up by the two blue LEDs we added earlier. Their pins fit into laser cut holes into the bulkhead, which just happen to match this style of tube, just like that. We'll glue in the first two, and once they've dried, we'll glue in the third one that sits on top of them. And I wanted three vacuum tubes just because we have three main nozzles. Kind of seemed to make sense. We are doing spaceship engineering here after all. In space, nobody can hear me laugh. Make sure they're nice and straight and parallel. All right, now I want to do something special. We're going to emboss a pattern using the head of a screw into our acrylic. And here's an example. If I heat it up with a lighter, this looks a little bit different than engraving with a laser cutter. The embossing looks a little different when you light it up with an LED. So we're going to emboss some little gauges onto our chassis here, our control panel, right in front of our astronaut. And the little light pipe we've created with our green LED should highlight them and make them look like illuminated gauges, I guess. So we'll use a lighter, light up our screw, and we'll stamp it into the acrylic and see how that looks. The embossing is kind of vis visible when the lights are off, but when the LED is on, it really stands out. At least that's the plan. I also like the shape of a screw like this, a Phillips head screw, because it does look like kind of a gauge with some dials or pointers on it. All right, do this two more times. We're gonna make basically three gauges because yeah, we have three engines. Just like that. And we'll turn it on and we'll see how they look. And yeah, they do stand out. I just think it's kind of a subtle thing, but yeah, it looks kind of cool. All right, now we'll add our nozzles to the back of our Raspberry Pi. There's one nozzle for each NeoPixel on the Raspberry Pi. I'm sorry, not a Raspberry Pi, Circuit Playground Express. So I need to remove the two screws that we used for the overall assembly process, and we'll add the nozzle assembly back on, just like that. And you can get a sense now. I, I kind of like this look. I use the kind of translucent natural uh, filament to 3D print these, because that's just about right to have them be lit up and illuminated. Then you can see our two blue lights lighting up our vacuum tubes. Third one will glue in just like that. It's got that nice bluish, uh, you know, nuclear fusion reactor glow, I guess. And we need to add our lower deck I didn't add it before just because we had to access a bunch of wiring and do some soldering, but now I can add that. So it mounts just like that. Lower deck looks good and has the right shape to fit inside of our, uh, our tapered bottle. So this is our 
finished spaceship. I've got everything mounted onto it. All the lighting works. Our different effects work. The Raspberry Pi lights up the vintage CRT display. The astronauts in place. And we are good to go. see the flickering of the nozzles and again the intent of that is you know astronauts are running low on fuel the engines are kind of halfway functioning just trying to get home running low on supplies etc we'll take a look at the different uh, space themed videos that the Raspberry Pi uh, cycles through starts off with kind of an explosion like that and then cycles through from there it does fill the entire screen on the CRT it's just some kind of artifact with the video here that sometimes it doesn't look like it this is the astronauts data panel I guess can't go wrong with bar charts and then we've got some other things to look at Now let's finish our base. For the base, I added a USB connector that will power our overall spaceship. Got a breakout connector on it, and it enables us to connect to VCC, which is five volts and ground from our USB. And then those wire up to two small screws which gets soldered to those connectors. Now, the one thing about this USB connector, it's a little bit fragile, I found. If you really yank on it, you can break it right off that board. So I made a little 3D printed flexible band that goes over the top of it, holds it down nice and steady, prevents it from breaking off. You could probably find a better USB breakout connector, but that band works good. Have four silicone feet to help it sit the right way. It looks just like that. Now I need to make our glass bottles or our water jars to store water. I use some resin, two-part resin, mixed in some alcohol dye to it, mixed in some bubbles on purpose, made some little uh, paper funnels and dripped it right into the little jars like this. Then let it set. So those are our I guess water storage jars. I glued them onto our deck right there. And yes, I know gravity would be an issue, but let's pretend this ship has artificial gravity and the jars always look like that. All right, that's about the last thing we're going to do, I think, with the ship. It's all come together now. And now we've got it inside the bottle, sealed in there. So on the previous episode, you saw me kind of test fit it into the bottle. Now it's in there. And you can see our, uh, our nozzles fit just right there on the back with the bevel. I'm not sure about this hook. I might just remove it. There are two brass buttons for our power. And here's our base. Those two brass buttons, of course, touch those two screws that have the five volts in the ground. So we'll go ahead and plug in a USB, put the bottle on the two brass on the two screws, and see if it powers itself up. And there we go. And this is how it looks: the finished product. So I like the angle it's at, kind of at a climbing angle. We've got the flickering nozzles in the back. Somehow when the bottle bottom is on, it makes those look better. Kind of magnifies them. 
We've got our blue fusion going on and our fuel tanks or whatever they are. Got our light pipe lighting up the console. Got our Raspberry Pi firing up. And we've got random light colors for the nozzles and back. I kind of like the random. And everything is still visible through the bottle with not much distortion. So it all kind of fits together. Our astronaut could use a little bit of smoothing. Kind of forgot to do that, but that's something I can come back to maybe. Now altogether, all these electronics draw about uh, 500 milliamps. So at five volts, that's what, about two and a half watts. So this thing inside this bottle altogether, it's like a little two and a half watt heater. So it will warm up the air inside the bottle. That's one reason I have the honeycomb uh, or hexagon cutouts in the deck is to kind of provide good airflow. If it turns out it heats up too much, I may just drill two little holes in the side and mask them as nozzles to let some air flow through. Here's a different variation. Here's a wine bottle, a traditional wine bottle, with a very similar, you know, spaceship design inside it. Made a little bit smaller. I kind of like this one because it's just recognizable as a wine bottle. I use the same two brass buttons for power, just like we did before. And that one fits on a slightly different base. It looks like this. Just like that. I thought I'd try a black acrylic base. It's kind of cool because it reflects on the bottom what you can see inside the bottom of the spaceship. But everything else mainly looks the same. Should be very familiar. So this is our fleet of uh, spaceships in a bottle. All right, we finished our spaceship in a bottle. I hope you enjoyed the whole process. It was uh, kind of a challenge to get everything working and fitting inside the bottle, get the design right, get the electronics working, the vintage CRT, etc. You saw a couple variations. So we have our, our classic, you know, spaceship in a bottle that we just made. I like the shape of this bottle because it kind of looks like a space capsule, I guess. And then you saw another variation for the, the wine bottle. Um, same type scenario, but a little bit different shape and look. That's kind of fun. Now, what I want to do in the future is build a kind of a, like a, some kind of engine, spaceship engine inside this beer bottle shape and somehow connect it on the side of the wine bottle to have it have a couple of engines on the side, something like that. So that's something I'll work on in the future. And then the big plan eventually is to use a big jar like this. This is kind of like a iced tea jar. So this is like space station size. So I wanna build something inside this. This bottle I think is too thick to really cut with what I have. So what I'm gonna do is have to take off the cap and literally build it the old fashioned way where the spaceship unfolds inside the bottle. I'll show you one idea I have for that. There's some cool electronics that unfold uh, mechanically. So take a look at this. All right, so that's one thing we can do. So we'll have some fun building a space, space station in a bottle uh, sometime in the future. But we're done with our spaceship in a bottle. I hope you enjoyed the whole process. Uh, I had a good time for sure. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Subscribe so you know when I do my, my next videos. And, uh, and give me a comment or two. I really love the comments that you all send. Uh, next time, something completely new. I think you'll enjoy it. It's going to be kind of unusual. And until then, just take good care of each other. And I'll see you later. Bye.